Hello and welcome back to Limited Insight. Six months on and we can finally bring you the final episode in this series. As you may know, it's not been the smoothest of months this past sort of three or four months, but we are now there. We are 100% complete. So today we are gonna finally discuss the cost of the Annex. Uh, we'll break it all down for you and discuss our experience. So we found a builder for this project. He did 99% of the work himself with the aid of a labourer or two. The only bit he actually outsourced was the rendering. We were quoted a fixed price of just under £50,000 for the building. This included internal walls, doors and woodwork, windows and doors, plumbing and exterior finishes. This cost also included repairing the garden, putting it back to the way it was before the build. We stripped out a few things from the original fully delivered quote to save some money, so we arranged the electrics ourselves, sourced the kitchen and bathroom. In the end, we ended up adding a few jobs to the build, namely the fitting of the kitchen and bathroom and the tiled path and patio. The decorating ended up being done by the builder too, as an apology for some of the delays. We just had to buy the paint. So add everything up and the total cost of the annex came in at around £62,000. Add architect fees and planning fees on top of that and it makes an even £65,000. So the cost breakdown looks like this. It cost us an extra £4,000 to have the builders install the kitchen and bathroom that we purchased and also lay and provide the materials for the path and patio area. We paid £1,838 for the kitchen, excluding appliances. £814 for kitchen appliances, including ceramic hob, oven, microwave and fridge freezer. £1,147 for the bathroom suite. This also includes tiling. £4,145 for electrics. We did overspend here a little bit. First fix cost us £1,645. The rest of that £4,145 was made up of uh, various components. So light switches, sockets, uh, wall heaters, uh, heated towel rail. Uh, heaters for the hot taps so there were quite a few bits and pieces which uh, which overall made the electrics one of the the biggest expenses of the build um, incidentally the main feed up to the annex cost us 700 pounds um, but that uh, also feeds our hot tub so it goes up to the site of the annex and then the hot tub is fed off that um, there's an awful lot of cable probably about 80 meters, maybe maybe more. 
Um, so the actual cost of installing an electric connection up to wherever you need it to be isn't really that expensive as long as you've got the available capacity within your fuse box. We spent £700 on flooring, so that's vinyl in the bathroom and main living area and carpet in the living room. And then you've got £100 for paint. Obviously I've not included furnishings such as sofas, tables and that sort of thing, but obviously that doesn't really factor into the build cost. The net result is a great building that has everything needed. All spaces are a generous size and it never feels cramped. So looking at the bigger picture here, if you remember our predicament, we uh, ideally wanted a bungalow. Uh, bungalows around here are around about £250,000, which was um, about a hundred grand more than uh, my mother could possibly afford. So wasn't going to be an option. Uh, we looked at park homes, that sort of thing. And again, they're quite expensive. A lot of them are not on very nice parks. And um, you've got all sorts of maintenance costs on top of that. So granny annexes are getting really popular in the UK and there's a very big reason for that. You can build something relatively cheap, uh, £65,000 in comparison to all other options is an absolute snip. Overall, it's just so much better than any of the alternatives and for far, far less money. So it's pretty much a no-brainer really. If you have the space to spare within your garden, uh, then you know, an, an annex is a, a superb way to spend your money. Now don't get me wrong, annexes aren't just for grannies. Um, the, these buildings uh, can be very worthwhile for any purpose. This one happened to be designed as a dwelling. Uh, you can't take any shortcuts when that's the case. So everything has to be built from ground up exactly like you would uh, a house. We certainly feel like we've got good value for money and the hassle of going through this project from scratch um, wasn't really that much bother. Um, the only bother that we had was delays from the builders from kind of halfway through the project. The overall experience of, of building from scratch from planning to sourcing a builder to, to getting everything on site and you know the building start to, to rise from the ground. Um, it was all, it was really interesting and uh, there wasn't an awful lot of input needed from ourselves, which suited us down to the ground. Um, we could kind of have as little or as much input as we wanted. We could just sort of trust them to get on with it and, and that's what they did. Uh, like I said, our builder was responsible for about 99% of all of work completed, um, excluding the electrics. And every job that he undertook was of really good quality. So I think we were lucky to find a decent builder. Um, I know sometimes they don't have a very good reputation, so it can be luck of the draw. But if you take the time to find somebody and check out their uh, portfolio and comments made by people that they've actually done projects for in the past, then you know you shouldn't go too far wrong. So two important things then that I've learnt from this process and uh, without things would have gone a lot worse I'm sure. Uh, number one is to find a decent builder that can do the vast majority of the work themselves. Um, any sort of delays and niggles that we had were always caused by third parties having to come in. So waiting for windows, waiting for the renderer, that sort of thing, a bit more work to be done on the roof. Whenever he required a little bit more help from uh, an outside party, that's when we started to get uh, a few more delays. So find somebody that can do as much of the work themselves within their, their business, or if it's a kind of a sole trader builder, make sure you, you find out first of all what they're capable of doing and what they'll need to outsource because it could have uh, an impact on your build time. We certainly found a good builder. I know we had issues with delays and many weeks with little work being completed sometimes, but there is no arguing with the fact that they took a lot of the hassle out for us and the quality of the work has been superb. Yes, it was frustrating to be messed about a bit from three months in, but um, on the, in the grand scheme of things, I think it could have been much, much worse. The second piece of advice I can give you is to make sure you have a good plan. I came up with several concepts and each one improved on the last. 
you need to really imagine how you are going to use the building and the spaces inside it, where you're going to need space and where you can afford to kind of borrow space from. Several things will dawn on you and each design will be better than the last. Once we had a solid design, we submitted this to an architect uh, who tweaked it a little. Obviously, architects have an awful lot of experience and they will pick up on things that you wouldn't have thought of. So don't just skip using an architect because their fees are fairly high. It's one of the most important things you can do. In our case, the architect gave us the floor to ceiling windows in the main living area and the door to the bedroom being at 45 degrees. This is not something I'd considered and it makes the space work far, far better. Simple things like that do make a big difference. If you don't have a good plan, you will quickly regret it as things progress with the build. So it's mega important to get it right when you submit planning. On the subject of planning, get your planning as early as possible, um, as many builders won't even commit to your project until this is granted, and aiming to start building around April, May is a good idea because the weather is then with you, meaning you shouldn't get as many delays due to poor weather. Because there are all sorts of jobs involved with building something like this that just simply can't be done in poor weather. So that's it for the Annex build. Thank you very much to everybody that has watched through this series and thank you to all those that have subscribed and commented during the course of the last six months. With this project done, I imagine that this channel will go back to complete randomness, putting out videos, reviewing items, generally putting my insight out there to all sorts of bits and bobs. That's it for now though. Thank you very much for watching. Bye bye.